square roots for Algebra 1. We're going to talk a little bit about what square roots are. They're when two equal factors of a number, when multiplied together, they result in that original number. For example, 4 times 4 is equal to 16. So that's 4 is a factor of 16. And when multiplied by itself, gives us the original number back. So we would say 4 is the square root of 16. Despite popular belief, it is not the root system of a plant that's shaped like a square. It is a math term. Here are some numbers that are nice to remember when we're talking about square roots. The numbers in green are called perfect squares. In other words, if you multiply the same number times itself, you'll get that as the result. So 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 9, 5 times 5 is 25, all the way down. These are the numbers that you want to take a look at. You can pause the recording and, and write these down. They're just 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, all the way through 12. And when you see a number that is like this, is a perfect square, it's a nice number to work with when we're talking about getting square roots. Square root symbol looks like this. And when we're asked to evaluate, I'm going to say the square root of 36. And from our previous slide, we know that 6 times 6 is equal to 36. So we can rewrite our square root in that form. In other words, like this, 6 squared. Okay, and we've just changed 36 to being 6 squared, or 6 times 6. And we know that the square root is the opposite function as the squared, that 2 up top. So we can cancel them out, just like you would cancel out multiplication being the opposite of division, or addition being the opposite of subtraction, they cancel each other out. The square root and squared cancel each other out, and you end up with 6. Let's do 81. The square root of 81, 81 is equal to 9 times 9, or 9 squared. Cancel out both of those, and our result is 9. 49 is equal to 7 squared. So again, we'll cancel out everything, and our final result is 7. That's the way that I do evaluating of squares when we're trying to find the square root of numbers. Let's look at some other types of examples. In this one, we're actually multiplying together the square root of 18 times the square root of 9. We can write that in, in another way. We could write that as the square root of 18 times 9. And we can put that all under here. What we saw earlier um, will show us that we can factor this down now. We've got the square root of 18. We can make that into the square root of 9 times 2. And then we have the other 9 left over. This may seem kind of like a little bit more work, because we could have just factored them starting at the beginning. But if you get some numbers that aren't perfect squares when you're multiplying them together, it's kind of nice to bring them together and then take them apart again. When we do this, when we're looking for factors, like I looked for the factor of 18, I found something, a perfect square, 9, because 9 is 3 times 3, and that is a perfect square factor of 18. All right, so 18 divided by a perfect square. And by doing that, I've essentially been able to isolate a bunch of or a couple of perfect squares. And then I'll be able to cancel out the perfect square and squared. And what I get as a result is 3 times the square root of 2 times 3, whoops, times 3. Or in other words, 9 square root 2. All right, those are just the steps of solving down here. And it's just factoring, um, factoring out. And the key, I think, is when you're taking out factors, you want to take out factors that are perfect squares. It'll help us to make it more simplified. Let's look at another question. And this is similar to the prior question. We're going to take out a factor. When I look at these two numbers, I try and find factors that are perfect squares. So what's a factor of 75 is, is kind of an easy one for me, because I know 75 is 25 times 3. 
48 has a lot of different factors, and it actually has a lot of perfect square factors. So I want to work with maybe 75 first, because that one's kind of easier. So I know what that means is 75 can be changed into 25 times 3. All right. Now, 48 also divides by 3. So I'm going to actually take 48, and I'm going to factor it right now. 48 is equal to 16 times 3. So that actually ended up working out very nicely, because 16 is also a perfect square. So 16 times 3 and 25 times 3. And we can do this in, in one of two ways. We can either say 3 over 3 is 1, so we can cancel it out. And in other words, we're just writing an equivalent fraction of 16 over 25 being equal to 48 over 75. Or if you want to do it another way, you can say It's the same as saying 16 over 25 times the square root of 3 over 3. And you can do that, but essentially what it's doing is it's saying 3 over 3 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So whatever 16 over 25 times 1. And you end up basically canceling that out anyway. So either way, you'll end up with the same result. And that is the square root of 16 over the square root of 25. And as we said before, 16 and 25 are both perfect squares. So it works out really nicely for us as far as finding the solution. The square root of 4 squared, those two will cancel each other out, and we end up with 4. The square root of 5 squared is 5. And that's going to be our final answer right there, 4 over 5. In the next type of question, it's asking us to find the square root of a decimal. A decimal can be written as a fraction. And in this case, it would be 0 0.64 is the same as saying 64 over 100. That's the way that we would write this fraction, uh, or this decimal, sorry, as a fraction. Just like in the prior question, we can now take the square root of 64 and divide by the square root of 100. And 64 is equal to 8 squared. That's one of those numbers from the beginning. And 100 is equal to 10 squared. As you see, it's doing factoring from these perfect squares goes really quickly because I have memorized that list that I was showing you earlier on. Knowing your, your perfect square factors is it's important, and it speeds things up. So we'll cancel out square root and squared on each of those, and we end up with 8 over 10, or in other words, 4 over 5. All right, that's going to be our final answer for that question. So if you have a decimal, you want to put it into, the, into a fraction form of square root of. And you'll put it into a fraction form, and then factor each the top and the bottom separately. All right. For the final question in this mini lesson on square roots, we're going to look at adding and subtracting square roots. Just like with adding and subtracting of any other number, you want to make sure that you have like terms. So we want to have the square root of 2 from each of these terms. And to do that, whoops, <laughs> look at that. I'm going to color in green for a minute there. We're going to change the square root of 18 to being the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And we're going to change the square root of 50 to being the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. All we're doing is trying to get that factor of 2 out for each term. And that way, we have a like term here. We have the square root of 2. We know that that's something we can't factor anymore. That's why we chose that one. Square root of 9 is equal to 3. So that's saying 2 times 3, which is 6. 
and then we say 5 times the square root of 25. Twen the square root of 25 is equal to 5, because 5 squared is 25. So we'll say this 5 times that 5 will give us the result of 25 square root of 2. Now that we have the square root of 2 for each term, we can now add them all together. 3 root 2 minus 6 root 2 is equal to negative 3 root 2. And then we'll add on 25, a positive 25. And we'll end up with the result of 22 square root of 2. And that'll be your final answer for that question. I hope this has been a helpful mini lesson. Have a wonderful day.